Hailing a London taxi is probably one of the most satisfying things you can do in London. But did you know there is a pro way of doing it? Come with me. Step number one is to stand in a hot spot of where taxis might be. Now I'm at this taxi rank in St. James's Square. There's no taxi and I can't see any coming. So we're gonna go stand somewhere a little bit busier. This is pretty central, but it's a bit chaotic. How am I gonna hail a cab down here? You know, just as important as finding a busy location to find the cab is finding somewhere ideal for that cab to stop. So we're gonna have a little look round in this area and assess where might be the best place to hail a taxi. So before we can actually hail a cab, we need to know what we're looking for. The most obvious and universal signifier if a London taxi is free is that the hire light on the very top of the taxi will be illuminated. That means that they are available. That is your light to freedom. You can also see it by the little light on the side as well. Generally, light on, hail it down, light off, it's taken. The other thing to think about when hailing a cab is not just whether that cab's available, whether it's an ideal place for that cab to stop. Now this doesn't look too bad. It is a double yellow line, but where in London isn't. The only issue with possibly hailing a cab here is that we're right by a set of traffic lights. If you time the lights right, it's not a bad place to quickly jump in whilst the cab is stopped. That happens quite a lot, but it never quite happens. Sometimes the lights turn green, it can cause a bit of a chaos. So the other thing to be wary of is just general obstructions in the road. So one of the things by every crossing is these zigzags. Now, the zigzags actually are illegal for anyone to stop or park on. So don't be upset if you hail a taxi from here and the taxi driver makes you walk halfway down the street for a more safer place to get in. Stopping on the zigzags is not only against the law, but it obstructs the view of the crossing. People could be trying to cross on this crossing and if people are parked on the zigzags, that view is blocked. Hence why it's illegal for us to stop there. Now this is a much more ideal place because as you can see, there's quite a long stretch of road. It's not blocking any crossings. It's very clear and easy for the cab driver to see me if I was to hail down here. But how do we hail down a cab? Good question I hear you ask. Let's give it a go. To hail a taxi, it's super simple. You just stick that arm up nice, loud and proud. Get eye contact with that driver and there's nothing more commanding or more amazing than saying, I'm hailing a taxi, yes. And keep it up for as long as possible to ensure that that driver can see it. They might be looking in their mirrors, they might be observing the road conditions. So keeping that up for as long as possible ensures your best chance of that driver seeing you. I mean, in my time, I've had all sorts of people hailing me in all manner of ways. I've had the limp wave, the thumb a lift, the peace sign. <laughs> yeah, it all works, but it's what's more obvious. If you really want to get in a cab, you've got to make it as obvious as possible. You know, it's a stark difference from the bus pass hail. That's the, I'm going for the bus. You know, that's how you hail a bus, right? That's how you hail a cab. I've had some Americans tell me that they're actually fearful of hailing a taxi because they heard it was illegal. And I'm like, what's illegal about it? Um, anything to get the driver's attention. I've had people just shout taxi or, you know, they whistle. It's not ideal, but, you know, sometimes I might not be looking in the right direction. It might be on the opposite side of the street. Whatever you can do to get the driver's attention, but the most obvious way of doing it, hand up nice and high so they can see it. And now that I've got your attention, I'd like to introduce the sponsor of today's video, which is me. Yes, this video is sponsored by my weekly Sunday summary email. That is an entirely free of charge email with over 2000 subscribers. What is it, I hear you ask? Well, basically all the fun stuff I get to do as part of making these videos, my general day-to-day -day life being around London, I share in a free email that you get every single Sunday. You can even check out my full back catalogue of all the previous Sunday summaries I've ever published in case you've missed them. I'll include the link in the description down below or it's all on my website as well. And that is pretty much everything I geek out about throughout the week. Also, if I release anything new, I put it out in that email first. It goes out way before YouTube. If I'm in the planning stages, if I need a little bit of help with production, it all goes on in the Sunday summary. So please do hit the link in the description down below, subscribe to it. Now let's find out about how to hail a taxi. Sometimes I have people hold up like umbrellas or walking sticks. And annoyingly, this actually, it doesn't work quite that well. Like as a driver, I kind of like see the shape of, of an outline of someone putting their hand up. In fact, I've had it plenty of times where someone will be pointing at a building 
and I go, oh, someone's hailing me down, but no, they're just pointing at a building or a adjusting their sleeve or their, their cuff or whatever. Also, similarly, make sure it's the correct hand because eye contact's a big thing. I've had some people that cover their face up like that and amazingly, it completely changes the shape of how someone looks when they hail a taxi and it makes it a lot more difficult for the driver. The other thing to look out for is before hailing a cab, check, you know, there's actually a rank on the streets because that will save you the hassle of having to try and find a cab because there's a whole line of taxis here waiting for you. Now, this isn't essential to hailing down a taxi, but it is pretty good form if you speak to the driver through the window before you get in the back. It will make you look like a pro, and also, I can hear the customer much more clearly. If they jump in the back, it makes the binging noise, my intercom might not be on, there's a lot of rustling that's going on, it's all a bit chaotic. So, by hailing down on the pavement, talking with the driver before you get in, it just slows it all down, makes it all a bit more human. My analogy to it would be a bit like going into a restaurant and just finding your own table without speaking to the waiter beforehand. Always speak with the waiter, they'll lead you to the table. Speak with the driver, he might say, sorry mate, I can't get you there. It's, it's only around the corner, but you might be better off walking because there's a lot of traffic going on. Saves the aggro of getting in the cab than having to get back out. So you're in an ideal location, you've got plenty of room for the cab to stop. You hail the taxi, but the driver doesn't stop. What, what's happened there? Could be a few reasons. First of all, you might be confused that the light is on when in fact it's off. So I've mentioned before the fact that the TXEs, the new electric taxis, have a, a higher light, which when the sun catches them, can make it look like they're on. Secondly, you might be in the vicinity of a nearby taxi rank. So if you look across the road, you'll see there is a pile of taxis that are waiting patiently outside the RAC. As a result, they are the taxis that have been queuing and waiting in this area. So the driver, out of respect for their colleagues, will probably won't want to stop because it's their job. They're the ones who have been waiting at that designated rank opposite. The other thing some of you might be wondering is rather than hailing a taxi in the street is to use an app on the phone. It's a good idea, but I generally stick to using apps further out of London. The thing is, when you're in central London, there's always plenty of taxis about, and it's often far quicker just to stick your arm up and speak with the driver there and then. There's no issues of payment because you can pay on card and cash in every single taxi. So the only real benefits an app will have is if you're, so if you're in a cul-de-sac somewhere in North London, that taxi is able to come right to your door. Also be wary that on most of the taxi apps is that drivers do have to pay some kind of a commission, and some of the apps will even give you, as the customer, an additional charge on top. Remember, by hailing a taxi in the street, you are dealing directly with that driver. It's just that meter and you. There is no other surcharges or expenses to worry about. It's the cheapest and easiest way of getting a taxi. You can hail a cab from the other side of the street. Again, speaking of it, what's ideal, might not be that ideal. For instance, we're on Piccadilly, there's two lanes of traffic in every direction, so might not be ideal to get one from the other side of the street. But if you are struggling, that might be your ticket to freedom. We're gonna hail a cab now, look at this. Loud and proud, as near as we can to the curb. That is how to hail a taxi like a pro. If you want to see the real challenges of what it's like to be a London taxi driver, I'd highly recommend you check out one of my shift videos and that'll be over here. See you again soon. Bye-bye.